How you doing guys? Welcome to another video. In this series of videos, we're on topic 10. It's organic chemistry. Let's get to it. So, topic 10, volume 1, Fundamentals of, of Organic Chemistry. We talk about a homodular series, we look at some structural formulas, and then we have a quick chat about some simple functional groups. IB understandings and applications are quite long for this topic, and they're really important for the next couple of topics coming up as well. So make sure that you have a good understanding of these basic understandings and skills that we'll go through in this video. Make sure you check out the text ref as well. The first family of molecules that we're going to look at are called alkanes. Alkanes have this formula CnH2n plus 2, and that's known as their general formula. So if we want to find the formula of an alkane, we use that formula. Alkanes contain only carbon and hydrogen, and they're connected by carbon to carbon single bonds. They're described as saturated because they contain the most number of carbon-hydrogen bonds possible. A series of compounds with similar chemical and physical properties is called a homodular series, a family of molecules. Members of this series, or the family, tend to have very similar, similar chemical and physical properties, and all they differ by is a CH2 group. So alkanes have the general formula CnH2n plus 2, where n is the number of carbon atoms. So we can use that to work out the molecular formula, the empirical formula, and the name for these alkanes. So if we have one carbon, we have the molecular formula CH4, which is known as methane. If we have two carbons, then we have the molecular formula C2H6. Now the molecular formula is different. That molecular formula is the simplest whole ratio, which is CH3. The second member of the series is called ethane. Another carbon, now we have three carbons on the chain, formula C3H10. Again, the empirical formula, because you've got a three in there, it will remain the same. And the name of the third member of this series is called propane. If we add in another carbon, so four carbons, we have the formula C4H10. That can be simplified to C2H5 as the empirical formula and the name of that molecule is butane. If we extend that out to five, we have the formula C5H12. Again, the five odd number means the empirical formula remains the same, and it is now called pentane. From here on in, the names of the alkanes follow the names of the shapes. So the pent having five sides, pentane. The next one with six sides is called hexane. So they now follow the names from um, shapes. One of the things you'll notice about the alkanes is they're all nonpolar. That means the only thing that holds them together are weak dispersion forces. So try and remember back to topic four, what happens to that force as the size of the chain increases? Well, the size of the van der Waals force, not the van der Waals, the London dispersion forces is going to increase, which mean the boiling points will also start to increase. As the molecules get bigger, there's stronger London dispersion forces. We're gonna have a look now at drawing some of these molecules. Now the structural formula shows the molecular geometry and you must show all of the bonds when you're asked to draw a structural formula. A condensed structural formula, or a semi-structural formula, emits the bonds and groups the atoms together. And the skeletal structure just shows the carbon to hard carbon backbone without any of the hydrogen atoms. So let's have a look at ethane. Ethane is C2H6. And the way that I want you to think of drawing these is in a zigzag. The carbons go in a zigzag, and then the hydrogens that end the molecule would continue that zigzag. Then you put your, car your hydrogens above and below. Once we get to the structural formula, we can group the atoms together by removing the bonds. So we would have CH3, CH3. The skeletal formula for this one's a little bit funny. It would just be a line with a carbon at each end of the line, each end of the line, and we don't have any hydrogens. So C4H10, let's have a look at that one. So we start with our carbon backbone, our zigzag of carbons. 
we continue the zigzag with the hydrogens at each end and then we look to place hydrogens exactly above and below those carbons. In that orientation we get all of the carbons to be tetrahedral. Each carbon has four bonds so they will all form a tetrahedral. The semi-structure, if we remove the bonds, would be CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3. And chemists might get a little bit lazy here and put the CH2 in brackets and say that we have two of them. So that's another way of writing the condensed structural formula. The skeletal formula will just look like a zigzag, just showing the carbon backbone only. As we move up to six carbons, we're dealing with hexane. Again, we start our carbon to carbon backbone, going in our zigzag fashion, and then we pretend to continue the zigzag with hydrogens at each end, and then we place hydrogens above and below the carbons. I run out of space a little bit there, but I guarantee you that those are hydrogens, um, just getting a bit squished. With the semi-structural formula, again, we can condense that by removing all of those CH2 groups in the middle, putting them in brackets and saying how many we have. So in this case, we have four, but we must show the carbons at the end in the condensed structural formula. The skeletal formula, well, that will just now be our zigzag of carbons in the chain. So the main features of a homodular series are the following. That successive members differ by a CH2 group only, and that they will have the same general formula. Members of a homodular series only differ by that CH2 group and as the length of the hydrocarbon chain increases, the boiling point also increases. On the right hand side we have the alkane homodular series and you can see that as we go from methane to octane, the chain gets bigger, there's greater dispersion forces. So that means that as this chain, that carbon to carbon chain, more electrons get placed in it, the bigger it gets, the stronger the London dispersion forces. The stronger those London dispersion forces, the more likely the molecule is to be a liquid, and then eventually, after about 20 carbons, it turns into what we would call a solid. Other physical properties in the series that show this predictable trend are density and viscosity. As we go, as the chain gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the molecules become more dense, and then if they're not a solid, they become more viscous. So the liquid gets more like honey. It's a lot harder to pour. The unit of density is the mass per unit volume. And remember that viscosity is the thickness of a liquid. So now we move on to structural isomers. And structural isomers are compounds with the same molecular formula, but a different arrangement of atoms. Butane is the first member of the alkane series to have structural isomers. And what we might be asked to do is to draw all of the isomers of a particular alkane. So the first one to do is the easiest one. That's the straight chain isomer. So we would have four carbons in a row with our hydrogens above and below those carbons. So how can we draw this in a different arrangement without forming any rings or losing any hydrogens? What I want you to do here is to think about the location of this hydrogen, and then the location of this CH3 group at the end of the chain. Now what I want you to do is picture that they replace each other, that I swap them over. So now I have a CH3 group in the position of that original hydrogen, and now I've got a hydrogen at the back there. That follows all the rules, it's still got the same molecular formula, but now it has what we would call a branch. The first one that we've Name, drawn is named butane, the straight chain isomer. And the second one is actually called methyl propane. It has a different boiling point than butane because they are different compounds. And the reason for that is that the methyl propane can't stack as nicely together. Each of those isomers is a distinct compound. They're different and they will have unique chemical and physical properties. And it's the the property of density that stops methyl propane having the same boiling point as butane. So pentane, C5H12, well it has three isomers. Can you draw them? Pause the video now, have a go at trying to draw them, and then they'll come up in a second. 
So the first one is the easiest to draw, the straight chain structure, where we have our four carbons in a row, sorry, our five carbons in a row, and then our 12 hydrogens above and below. But what are the other isomers? Well, here are the other two isomers to give us our three. Now what we need to do is be able to name them. So naming these isomers, we always start with the longest carbon to carbon chain. So in the first molecule, we have five carbons in a row. Something that has five carbons in a row is called bu, it's called a pentane. Five meaning pent. So that isomer is called pentane. On the second one, we only have four carbons in a row. One, two, three, four. And then coming off the second carbon, we have what I would refer to as a branch. So what we need to do now is we need to think about what if we numbered it from the other direction? Well, that branch would be on the third carbon. We want to keep the branch numbers to as low as possible. So the numbering in the red is correct. Now that branch, a CH3, a CH3 is described as a methyl branch. So this one is called methyl butane. Generally, we need a number to describe the position of a methyl group, but because that's the only location for this group, we don't need one in this case. In the third situation, we have three carbons in a row. We have two methyl branches coming off the second carbon. Now, when we have two of the same thing, we use the prefix di. So this one here would be called dimethyl, and then something with three carbons, propane. Again, I don't need a number for those two branches because there's only one spot for them to go. If they're at either end of the chain, they end up being one of the other isomers. Alkenes. Alkenes consist of a carbon backbone that contains at least one carbon to carbon double bond. And you must be really specific with your definition there. One carbon to carbon double bond. Alkenes have the general formula CnH2n. And a hydrocarbon that has that general formula belongs to the modular series of alkanes. The naming for alkenes is the same as the name for alkanes, except we replace the last, last part of the name with ene. Alkenes are classified as unsaturated because of the presence of the double bond means that it is the carbons are connected to less hydrogens than the maximum. The arrangement of bonds around the carbon to carbon double, double bond is triangular planar. So try and incorporate that structure into your diagram. So ethene, C2H4, would have a carbon to carbon double bond and then four hydrogens both of those carbons is in the triangular planar arrangement. The condensed structural formula or the semi-structural formula would be CH2, double bond CH2, if they're nice to you. If they're not so nice to you, they'll just write CH2, CH2. Propene. Propene will have a double bond between two of the carbons and then a single bond to the third carbon, which means that we have a CH3 group as well and the double bond must be between the first and the second carbons. Drawing the skeletal structure for that one, omitting the carbons, we just show the backbone, so we would have like two lines and then a diagonal line coming off. So now we've got to start to draw structures for the following alkenes. So the first one is 1-butene. Now butene has the formula C4H8. The 1 represents the location of the double bond. So the double bond is located between the first and the second carbon. Everywhere else we would have hydrogens. After the double bond, I would continue my zigzag formation. The semi-structural formula for 1-butene would be CH2, CH, CH2, CH3. 1-hexene, again the 1 representing the location of the double bond, means that the double bond is between the first and the second carbon. Here we have 6 carbons in the chain, and then I would go through and place in my hydrogens. I used to call that a porcupine, and then the semi-structural formula is below. 2-hexene, the 2, represents the location of the double bond, and it can either be written as 2-hexene or hex-2-ene. But all it means is that the double bond is now between the second and the third carbon. 
The rules about the shapes still don't change, and our semi-structure by condensing the bonds can be shown. So the two, meaning that we have the carbon to carbon double bond starting on the second carbon. So the isomers of pentene. Again, we want to try and draw all of the different isomers for the pentene molecule. And in this case, there are four of them. Five of them, sorry. So I've drawn those five. I'd like you to just pause the video now and then I'm going to go through and name them. So the five isomers, the first one would be called 1-pentene. We've got first and second carbons with a double bond and then five carbons in a row. The second molecule would be called 2-pentene. The double bond is between the second and the third. The third one's a little bit different. We've got a branch. The Double bond is between the first and the second carbon, and our branch is coming off our second carbon. So we name this 2-methyl for the branch, and then four carbons in a row is known as butene, and I have to say where the location of the double bond is as well. So it's 2-methyl, 1-butene. The fourth one, well, we have our branch coming off the third carbon in this case, and our double bond is still between carbons 1 and 2. We name the branches first, they, they come as a prefix, so we have 3-methyl-1-butene or 3-methyl-but-1-ene. Number 5 is a little bit different, we have to name, we have to number this branch so that it has the lowest number. So in this case the branch will be coming off the second carbon. For this one we will have the name of 2-methyl-2-butene butene or but 2 in. Okay, alkynes. Alkynes are the last type of homodular series we'll look at in this video and they are unsaturated as well because they contain a carbon to carbon triple bond. They have the formula CnH2n minus 2 and they are also described as unsaturated. So ethyne has a carbon to carbon triple bond with the formula C2H2 and the arrangement around that carbon to carbon triple bond is linear. We change the last name from ain to ein when we have an alkyne. So propyne would have the formula C3H4 and we can draw it with our carbon to carbon triple bond in a linear arrangement. Hex 2 ion, the 2 represents the location of the triple bond. So here we would have 6 carbons with the triple bond between the second and third carbon. And then everywhere else we would have hydrogens. Just remember the rule that a carbon can only have 4 bonds, so make sure you don't put in too many bonds for each of the carbons. Underneath we've got two examples of alkynes. To name them, the first thing we do is number the longest chain. So in this case, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this would be called 2 but ein. But meaning 4 carbons, ein meaning triple bond. In the last one, we've got a branch and a triple bond. So if I number from the right, I can see that my, double, my triple bond has the number of 4. If I number from the left, I can see that my triple bond has the number of 3. So we must use the numbering in the blue to give the triple bond the lowest possible number. So in this case, we would have the, the name 5-methyl, and then we have a number of carbons in a row here. 7 in total. So 5-methyl-3-heptine, or 5-methyl-heptine. Okay, volume one, some top tips. Know the general formula, and you need to do lots of practice with the naming. I know I've been a bit quick here, but make sure you practice in class and ask your teacher if you need some help. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you next time.